first of all, let me just say it's an honor. Honor. If you please introduce yourself to to the people. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Ramon Banda, and uh, musician. You know, uh, here in Southern California for the last professional musician for like the last 50 years. Wow. First, let me just start by uh, asking. Um, tell us about your family and cultural background. Okay. Uh, uh, well, we're uh, my uh, parents were both born in, uh, in Texas, and actually we just realized that my, uh, my both of my grandmothers uh, were born in Texas also, mm -hmm. and my grandfathers were born in Mexico, and I think it's, we're like third or fourth generation uh, here, okay. uh, but I mean, before that, I mean, they, they always lived at the border, just so, okay, so you guys are here. <laughs> so, that kind of deal. Okay. And uh, anyway, uh, my uh, parents uh, actually grew up in towns very close to each other there in, in Texas, little towns in West Texas. Okay. And, but they didn't meet until they were here okay. uh, in Southern California. And so um, my mom had moved out here with her family and they worked. Uh, you know, they came out here for the work, different jobs. They worked as farm workers and stuff like that up and down the, up and down California. But their base was here in Southern California. First and foremost, when did you begin your commitment to cultural music? Uh, I was introduced to cultural music uh, in my late teens. Uh, by the time I um, was 17 years old, I started playing um, Latin music, uh, music from the Caribbean, for the music from Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. And um, Latin music has influenced uh, rhythm and blues and uh, rock and roll and jazz in various forms uh, because they used percussion instruments and uh, they used the, uh, the cha 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 and um, and, uh, and uh, the mambo. Well, can you share a moment in your life when you uh, were inspired to commit your life to music? Uh, you know what? I can't go back to a, a, a single moment, but uh, it, the music has always uh, had always been there. You know, in, in our front room is where we had my uncle held rehearsals and we had we were, you know things. So there was always instruments laying around: guitars, drums, horns. We always had a piano in the house. So we just. You know, my brother was, let's see, he must have been about three and a half, four years old when he started, my uncle started teaching him how to play bass, and I was maybe five years old when they taught me, you know, chords and stuff on guitar. So by the time I was six and my brother was five, we were playing gigs. You know, Saturday night, weddings, parties, you know, fights. <laughs> so we, we were in the middle of it Everybody. from the get-go. Okay. I mean, I remember times, but now I guess it would be considered child abuse or something, but we would be up at, you know, midnight, and they, they would take us into the restroom and put cold water on our face. Who have been your musical men mentors in this journey of music? Well, um, uh, see, when I was, uh, as I was growing up, uh, I was influenced by John Coltrane, mm. uh, who was uh, <clears throat> just a master uh, 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 saxophonist, mm. uh, and uh, he was the um, icon of improvisation. Yes. And um, uh, so I was influenced by John Coltrane as well as, um, as or as much as the saxophone players. Mm -hmm that I grew up with. Uh, who were some of your primary musical um, influences? Uh, man, I, I listened, you know, uh, well, primarily my uncle, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Chavarria, uh Sr. He was uh, very much influenced by musicians uh, like Coleman Hawkins, uh, Ben Webster, that whole, like, 30s and 40s okay. swing musicians, okay. you know. So he taught us, as we were kids, not only did we play, you know, like polkas and corridos, and he, he could play a million songs, you know, and, and just make up medleys of stuff. But we also had to learn how to play, you know, standards, American standards, like Stardust and I Wish You Love, and yeah. all that kind of stuff, Body and Soul, and all that kind of music, you know. 
So to us, you know, we'd watch TV and we, we would see, you know, Cal Worthington that sells yes. cars. The cars, you know, yeah. yeah. Go see Cal. Go see Cal. Go see Cal. Well, back in the, I guess it must have been the late 50s and early 60s, he had a TV show mm -hmm. that went along with his selling cars. Selling cars. And he would go to the, like, the hillbilly bars. Wow. Right? And broadcast from there and they would have the country bands play. Wow. So we were digging on the country thing too. Okay. You know, and then my mom would listen to that. We just, you know, yeah. Williams and all that stuff. So. Okay. It was all happening. So it was, there was no, you know, you're going to play this, you're going to play that. If it was good music and we dug it and we played it. What kinds of cross-cultural musical uh, collaborations have you been involved in or currently a part of? Um, well, I uh, see in uh, 19... 71, I joined Ray Barretta's band mm -hmm. in New York City. Uh, I was, uh, uh, I had only been in New York about six months, and I was leading a um, sort of a um, uh, top 40s uh, 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 Latin American music. Uh, Ensemble it was like a, a quartet. Sometimes it's been to a quintet, and um, uh, that was my first job in New York. Um, uh, I was playing at a place called the, uh, the Ali Alibaba. Mm. The name of that band was called the Adventures of Soul. So we did like a mix of uh, popular music and uh, and then uh, uh, some Brazilian uh, and uh, some Latin, some jazz. 